All right, Taylor, can you uh, share the <coughs> share the deck? Cool, cool. All right. Um, just in terms of order of attendance, uh, looks like uh, Alexis can't make it uh, this time due to vacation. Uh, is Brendan Burns or Joe Beta here? I don't see you guys on the list. Okay, Joe's also on a vacation, so I'll note that. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so that's so we got Brian, Jeff, Kelsey, Matt, <coughs> Quinton, and Jang here. So um, kind of first uh, order of business, um, we had. TOC chair um, elections, um, you know, <clears throat> essentially Alexis has been TOC chair for the last uh, few years and has done a, you know, fantastic job. And, um, you know, we had a new set of elections due to the TOC and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, Kelsey Hightower will be taking um, the reins. So I believe Kelsey is on uh, this call. So uh, Kelsey will essentially be leading these meetings uh, and uh, taking the role of TOC chair, which also has a seat on uh, the governing board representing the interests of the TOC and technical community. So uh, Kelsey, feel free to say something or say some words if, if you like. Otherwise, <coughs> well, well, I'm still ramping up. So I'm just kind of understanding the scope of the TOC, making sure we can keep these meetings super focused and maybe focus a little bit of, uh, on the outcomes. It looks like the last couple of years have been defining the TOC and what it should be doing and maybe now just doubling down on that scope. Cool, awesome. Um, so in terms of agenda today, uh, you know, we'll go over a couple things around, um, we just kicked off the container D graduation vote that's happening live. Uh, we'll have more discussions around CNCF um, SIGs. Uh, we have a community presentation from uh, the CII uh, best practicing best practices badging project. So David Wheeler is here from that community who will be presenting a little bit later to answer any uh, questions that folks have uh, for a very kind of interesting project. And then we'll talk a little bit about the backlog. So um, feel free to go ahead, Taylor. Yep, container degraduation vote. So just a reminder to everyone that this is going on um, right now. Uh, there's the message where the votes are happening and uh, the pull request for uh, full details. So. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll leave this open for about a, a week or so and uh, hopefully come to a uh, conclusion uh, on that. So thank you to everyone who has uh, voted so far. Moving on, uh, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, yeah, um, you know, sponsorships are open. Uh, we just opened the uh, maintainer uh, track, uh, <coughs> sorry, the maintainer slots for KubeCon China. So if you are a maintainer on a CNCF project, you should have received a note to request your intro and deep dive sessions there. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, we have three events, three big events this year that we're looking forward to. Next up. Uh, yeah, and Dan reminded uh, me that Friday is the deadline for the Shanghai CFP. So if you want to get your uh, talks in for Shanghai, uh, please do it by uh, Friday. So like I mentioned, uh, Kelsey is uh, TOC chair and taking the reins, super excited um, about that. So next slide. Uh, another kind of uh, administrivia for the TOC, um, you know, we have term limits uh, uh, this time around. And since we're trying to stagger uh, terms instead of having, you know, six slots uh, open up uh, at once, essentially. So uh, we just did essentially a randomized selection of who gets uh, two year terms and one year terms. Um, so here are the results of that. So both uh, Zhang, Matt, and Brendan have two year terms, and Alexis, Joe, and Kelsey uh, got the one year term slots. Uh, next up, uh, another friendly reminder to folks, uh, some folks have been reaching, uh, reaching out about the annual report. Um, we had a lot of feedback from the conferences in terms of trying to be more transparent about, um, you know, number of attendees, end users, vendors, satisfaction level. So we uh, published a conference transfer transparency report uh, for the last KubeCon we did in Seattle. So uh, please take a look at both of these reports and give us uh, any feedback um, you know, that you have to kind of make these things um, uh, better for, for folks. Uh, and just final kind of reminder for Summer Code. Um, we have, uh, you know, been participating for the last three years uh, in CNCF and have, you know, an amazing 
you know, set of success for these projects. We've had some, you know, interns uh, from Summer Code actually become full-time maintainers for some of these projects and even end up getting uh, full-time jobs at uh, amazing companies that we have in our ecosystem. So please uh, take the time to submit a project if you have a, uh, if you're a CNCA project, it's well worthwhile. Uh, next up, all right, SIGs. So we've been talking a lot SIGs. Uh, I think Quinton has kind of been taking point on this uh, along with Alexis. So Quinton, you want to kind of give an update since I've seen the uh, massive pull request activity last uh, couple of hours. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I think most of the feedback has been addressed uh, in what I hope is uh, adequate for everyone. So most of the comments I actually incorporated into the document. I think there are two outstanding areas that perhaps are worthy of uh, additional discussion. Uh, we may not have time here to do justice to them, but the one is um, uh, the question about whether actually a TOC member has a place uh, role to play in these SIGs. Uh, there is, the proposal is very clear that there is a co-chair, it's, it's termed a non-executive co-chair on each of the SIGs, uh, who is a TOC member and who essentially represents the TOC's interests on that SIG. And there's been some comment to say, well, we don't need such a thing that the, the SIG can talk to the TOC directly. Um, so that I think is unresolved. My personal opinion is that, that it's not practical to have all of the SIGs talk to all of the members of the TSC all of the time and that we do need to channel the stuff through representatives. Um, but there seems to be some disagreement on that. And the other one is about you know, what I'll term SIG sprawl. I think there are many individuals and uh, companies who would like to see you know, their favorite area have its own SIG. Um, and so there's been several, you know, different but similar-ish looking proposals to split SIGs up into smaller pieces. Uh, and if we take that to its logical conclusion, we end up with a fairly significant number of SIGs. Um, not only the SIG sprawl problem, but also one problem I've identified is that um, many of these SIG areas are actually, there's not necessarily clear agreement on where we should split them. If we should split them in, into pieces, exactly where are the seams along which they logically split? So my personal opinion or my personal preference would be to start with a smaller number of larger SIGs and have their, you know, one of their first uh, items of business being to uh, survey the lay of the land and figure out where to split that SIG if necessary. Um, uh, currently, we have six proposed SIGs. And there are at least a couple of those where people have come back and said, oh, this should not be one SIG, it should be split in two. Uh, but it's not clear to me that we actually have agreement exactly where the split lies. Uh, so it seems like the SIG itself would be the best uh, vehicle by which to define where the separation between two related SIGs is. So that's my brief summary. Does anyone want to add to that? Uh, I know Yuri, you had quite a few uh, suggestions in the PR. I'm hoping that I addressed them all. Most of them I uh, actually changed the, the PR to accommodate. Uh, in fact, all of them. Uh, anyone else here who's made comments? Stunned silence. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's, my, <laughs> that's my spiel for today. Yeah, I mean, Quentin, one idea for me is, you know, we, we essentially need to get this to a point where, uh, you know, we'll have the TOC vote and then maybe uh, start a little bit small with a pilot SIG. That is kind of kind of my my thought process here to actually get this moving. So totally agree. Um, so so my thinking is that it's in a votable form at the moment. I just wanted to highlight that there are two comments from the community that have explicitly not been addressed. Uh, and so the TOC needs to decide whether they are happy with those as is or whether they would like them changed. Um, we could, yeah, I don't know if you want to call a vote now or get an indication of whether the TOC is ready to call a vote now. Yeah, I mean, maybe a bit of an indication if, if anyone on the TOC was actually strongly opposed to calling a vote. And then we could, uh, you know, clean up the last little bits and then pick a pilot uh, one or two SIGs to, to kind of start this and then kind of go uh, go from there. Yeah. Having a vote sounds good to me. Cool. 
anyone else? If, if not, um, you know, we'll leave it open for uh, a little bit for some final feedback and then we'll call a formal vote um, of the TOC and community. And then hopefully by the next TOC meeting, um, we can try to get uh, at least a pilot SIG um, being formed. Sounds good. Cool, all right. I think next up is maybe Wheeler, or Sigs. Yeah, keep, keep going, Taylor. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of discussion around improving uh, graduation criteria for uh, CNCF projects, um, you know, expanding the scope of, uh, you know, maybe mandating security audits or potentially requiring different levels of CII best practices badging and so on. So, uh, we thought it would be good to have uh, one of the main uh, authors of the kind of best practices project discuss a little bit of how they work, um, how you could, uh, you know, share uh, improvements with them, methodologies, and, and so on, since, um, you know, there's been a lot of kind of generally positive feedback about the best practices project. So I, I will hand it off to David Wheeler to introduce himself and talk a little bit about the project before we open it up for, for feedback from everyone. Okay. Are you there, David? Fantastic. Uh, ab absolutely. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. It's, it's all you now. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm not sure that I can control the slides, so I think uh, someone else is pushing yeah, the yeah, forward and back button. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All right. So I'll try to say next when it's supposed to move on uh, and uh, resist the urge to touch the keyboard. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, David Wheeler, I'm the uh, lead of the uh, CIA Best Practices Badge Project. Um, it's basically a sibling. It's, it's another project from the uh, Linux Foundation under the uh, Core Infrastructure Initiative. Um, I think the key reason that I'm being asked to talk with you guys today and um, tell me if I'm wrong is, you know, currently it's already required to get a graduation status to get a passing badge. We actually do have two higher levels, silver and gold. And uh, it is possible to change the criteria, though that's, it's not easy and there's reasons for that. Um, so I, I think the goal today is to try to find out, you know, it, it, you know is what you're doing um, uh, the best uh, that you can do for yourselves, for your decisions, or do you want to make a, a different decision strategically? Is that correct? Not correct, Chris? Uh, correct. And, and also, I, I think there, there are some folks that may not be familiar with the project, so I wouldn't assume, you know, a full-blown knowledge of the project since, uh, you know, most of our projects have gone through the process, but not but not everyone in this call actually does have a kind of a, live, uh, a wider community on it. So. Okay, fantastic. Um, I, I didn't put as much about that, but uh, I'll try to verbally say some things. And if you guys have questions, uh, please just uh, pipe up. I think that's kind of the point of the call today is uh, to have that discussion. Um, so um, <clears throat> just to uh, just to level set here, uh, the underlying pr premise of the badging system is that open source software tends to be more secure, higher quality, if you follow good practices. Uh, things like, do you use version control? Do you have automated tests? Um, and uh, we, we basically went around to uh, try to identify those best practices. And I want to emphasize, this is for production of open source software. We're, we're not really focusing on ingest. Um, obviously, that matters too. Uh, we very much based the practice list on existing well-run practices um, with the overall goal of making the uh, make it more likely to have higher quality, more secure software. Um, key thing to note is that the CI best practices badge is intentionally designed to uh, work for any open source project. And we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about how we do that. But the, the goal is to have a general purpose uh, set of criteria. Um, the main website's listed there. If you go there, you can uh, <clears throat> learn lots more. Uh, next, please. So I wanted to show some quick stats, uh, just a, a, a screenshot earlier. Uh, there's over 2,000 projects that are currently pers uh, pursuing badges, and uh, there's over uh, 200 that have actually achieved a badge, and you know, and a large number of projects that have achieved various uh, states towards getting, you know, at least the passing badge. Um, and so you can see over time, it's been there's been this steady growth of uh, participating projects and not just pro projects joining, but projects working uh, to get a badge. Uh, next. There are actually three badging levels, as I mentioned earlier. Passing is the one that we've really been uh, uh, focusing on telling folks about, but we also have the silver and gold level. Uh, I do want to emphasize that any level is an achievement. So merely getting a PAXIG badge, the word merely is really misleading. Uh, for a lot of projects, they find that it's, it's a, a real achievement. 
for each of the higher levels, you have to achieve the previous levels. Uh, that's just for simplicity's sake. And I mentioned this earlier, we're really focused on stuff that real projects do. Uh, we're totally uninterested in criteria that, you know, some academic somewhere thinks it's a good idea, but no one actually does that. Not, not interested. Uh, the passing badge was an attempt to capture what typical well-run projects uh, what well, well-run projects typically already do. That said, we found that a lot of projects find they're missing something. When you gather a whole bunch of criteria, any one of them is done by most, pro most well-run projects, but when you collect them all together, people find, oh, I'm missing one, I'm missing the other. Uh, after we identified the criteria, we grouped them into six categories, and I think that helps give you a sense of the kinds of criteria there are, uh, some basics, uh, you know, what, what license and so on, change control, reporting quality, uh, security. Uh, silver is uh, harder than passing, but we did design it so it's possible to do it for even single person projects. Uh, gold really does require uh, multiple people. Um, <clears throat> you know, some of those criteria are great for users, but you have to have multiple project, multiple people on the project. I don't think that's such a big deal for CNCF, but that is a big deal for some other organizations. Uh, next. So um, I can talk a little, quite a bit about the criteria, but I also want to talk about the, what the criteria don't require, and this is by intent. Um, first of all, we, we never require any specific technology, product, service, don't require, don't forbid any particular programming language. We never require proprietary software. You certainly can use it. You can depend on it. We design it so that those who do not want to depend on it uh, can still get a badge. doesn't cost anything to get them. Uh, the goal is very much not to take over projects. It's you know, here are the things you should be doing. Um, you can decide how you want to achieve that. And we absolutely don't require uh, doing everything immediately. Uh, some projects find they're doing everything, they get a badge <laughs> uh, essentially immediately. Uh, but some projects uh, say, hey, I want to get badge, and they find out, well, whoops, I'm missing some things. Uh, you'd be surprised, but there are still projects out there that don't have automated tests. Um, I guess quite, uh, somebody quietly, I'll say shame on you, but okay, they'll have to go make an automated test suite. Uh, another common thing that's missing is, is one of those super easy things to fix is tell everybody how to report vulnerabilities. Uh, you can do that with one sentence in a readme, but there's still a lot of projects that don't tell everybody how to report vulnerabilities. And for uh, some projects that uh, turns out to be a big problem and creates lots of challenges for uh, researchers who are trying to report the vulnerability. They first have to figure out uh, how to, in fact, to process the thing, and that's the wrong time to figure that out. So <clears throat> a lot of projects just, they get close and then they gradually work off the rest. Uh, next, okay. I, I didn't have a, uh, a list of the sample criteria for, um, for uh, passing, since you guys are actually already requiring that for graduation, but I think I've already hinted at some. Uh, automated testing is one, version control unsurprisingly is one, uh, tell everybody how to report vulnerability, it's those kinds of things. And the, and the goal was really, most people when they look at that criteria, they don't necessarily say my project does it, but they do say generally, oh yeah, I should be doing those things. Uh, and, that's, and that's kind of the response that we're, we're trying to get. You may have not thought of this, but once you read it, you go, oh yes, that's something I should be doing. The silver criteria build on that. You have to get the passing criteria to uh, before you can try before you can get silver. Uh, for silver um, contribution requirements, you must tell everyone um, what uh, the requirements are for acceptable contributions, coding standards, whatever. Uh, you have to have a report tracker. Uh, you have to do some sort of static analysis tool to analyze your source code. Um, you know, assuming that there's at least one open source tool that does that. Um, next. Oops, do we not have a next? Oh, oh too many. <laughs> okay. Um, another one is, uh, you know, if, you're in, uh, if your software is being produced in a memory unsafe language like C and C++, then you have to use a dynamic tool. We don't know, we're not saying you can't use C and C++, but there are certain common pro problems that are really common in something implemented in C and C++. And so while you know, dynamic analysis is great for everybody, you have to use those for those languages to counter some of the problems that can otherwise creep in. Um, another requirement, which a lot of folks are already doing, but uh, many others are not, is uh, there should be some legal mechanism uh, to assert that in fact the contributions are legal and 
the easy way to do that is a, a developer certificate of origin, DCO. Linux kernel does this, lots of other projects do it. It's, uh, it's, a, low, uh, it's, it's a low effort ceremony, but it helps keep things, um, uh, you know, some legal problems away. Um, the project should have what's called a bus factor. You should have at least uh, two people. Um, you know, if one person uh, gets killed by the metaphorical bus, um, there's somebody who could pick over, uh, take that over. We're only making that a should. We move that to a must later on gold. Next. Uh, governance. And of course, uh, given this particular body, uh, you're already uh, very familiar with the issues of governance. But, you know, some projects don't tell everybody, here's how we govern the project. Here's how we make decisions. What are the key roles? And for silver, we say, you know, you've got to tell people how that happens. Um, we don't mandate a particular process or governance model, but we do say you have to tell everybody what it is. Um, documentation for security. You've got to document for the user what they can and can't expect for security. Different projects have different expectations, um, and, you know, and, and we're trying to be flexible, but we do think that everybody, every user should know what the project is trying to achieve and why they think they're achieving that. Um, one requirement that's gotten a lot, that had a lot of discussion in the uh, process of creating these criteria was a test coverage. Um, the passing uh, badge requirement only requires that you have a test suite um, and that you are, and that you have in general agreed that you're going to improve it as you, uh, your test suite as you improve, as you add uh, capabilities. Um, but this uh, requirement at the silver level says, hey, your tests have to cover at least 80% of your code. Now, you, um, many people are familiar with this kind with test processes and test coverage can easily tell me, well, you can have that coverage and have a lousy test suite. Absolutely true. But if you don't cover most of the code, for sure you have a, te a lousy test suite. So this at least gets rid of the pikers who, yeah, I've got a test suite, but it doesn't really cover a lot of the code. And no, that's not all that great. We, you really need to, you know, a higher bar is better. Uh, next. All right, so I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is give a sampler of what these criteria look like. Uh, for the gold, uh, bus factor is now a must. You absolutely must have you know, two or more folks if somebody gets killed, you know, we hope not, but it can happen, we're all mortal. Uh, somebody should be able to take over. Um, at this point, we'll, we have another requirement, which is even stronger. They have to be, there has to be at least two unassociated significant contributors. You know, if a, and by unassociated, we're talking about corporate association. If everybody's on a single company and the company decides, you know, I'm not interested in investing anymore, um, projects sometimes can fold pretty quickly if it's um, supported by a single company. Uh, this is something, of course, the CNC, uh, uh, you guys are painfully familiar with. Um, so we're basically saying, hey, you've got to have at least two different organizations involved. Um, to requiring 2FA. Uh, this is basically making sure that uh, you're using 2FA for changes to your, uh, some central repo or sensitive data. Um, Two-person review, um, lots of debate about how much review was necessary. A lot of folks idealize, ideally would have 100%. That seems to be a challenge for a lot of projects. So at least half of the, uh, all the changes get uh, reviewed by someone else. Next. Uh, reproducible builds. Uh, I'm a big fan of reproducible builds. I encourage them wherever they go. Uh, some people have trouble with, with uh, doing reproducible builds. Uh, if you've been following the work of Debian, um, you know, they've got some uh, amazing work that's going on, but it's not necessarily actually deployed out in their system. And that's one of the more, uh, that's one of the organizations that's working especially hard at this. So uh, at a gold level, say you've got to do that. Uh, the test coverage for statement goes up to 90% and branch coverage goes to 80% for your test suites. Again, the goal here is we want people to have good automated test suites. Uh, this is a way to help um, ensure that in a, in a way that you can quantitatively measure. Um, security review, we, I noticed a lot of talk about this. The way the CII badging requirements have that is you have to have a security re review in the last five years. Uh, and that has to consider both the requirements and the security boundary. I'm sure that we're about to have discussions about that, and that's great. Uh, next up, 
All right. Um, can the criteria be changed? Yeah, actually, we expect that they, they be changed over time. That said, changing the criteria can have a big effect on projects that are participating. Our goal is to not change criteria so much that nobody's interested in trying to achieve a badge. The badge, of course, is just uh, an outward symbol. The real goal is to get projects to do good things and for users to be able to know that those projects are doing the good things. So we don't. So if a project has honestly received a badge, they have a right to not have that just taken away from them without notice. Um, so we do change criteria immediately, stuff like spelling corrections and grammar corrections and stuff like that. If there's a clarification that was expected but maybe was not clearly done, we at least you know make sure that there's an opportunity to review of those changes. But let's say we want to do more significant change, like a whole new criteria. Um, those we expect to have less often, and projects have to be given time to either object or modify their project to comply with that. Right at this point, we have generally expected uh, badge criteria are going to change at most once a year, and we say projects have to have at least two months' warning um, of the new criterion and opportunity to keep the badge. We actually have a system called Future Criteria where we can identify that. Um, Basically, here's a criteria that's going to take place, and you can see it, you can review it, you can uh, you know, uh, tell folks yes, we comply, and you have time to make that change. In general, uh, we're, uh, it's easier to change the silver and gold criteria simply because there's far fewer uh, silver and uh, gold projects, and they're already expecting that that's going to be much harder. Um, that's not saying that we can't change the passing criteria. We certainly can um, and have. But um, we, we, we want to do this in a way that is not um, uh, harsh on the projects that are already participating. Uh, details on the, our, our own governance structure and the criteria changing process is there in the URL on the bottom. Uh, next, yeah, and this is my last slide anyway. All right, so CNCF uh, graduation status currently already requires uh, getting a CII Bastards Practices badge at the passing level. Um, you know, you get you you, uh, you you folks can make the decision. Um, you know, do you want to stay with passing? You could switch that to silver to, or to gold for graduation, depending on what your objectives are. Uh, you can change your criteria. Obviously, it's a big deal because we don't want to do that uh, just haphazardly. We want those change and those changes have to really apply to all projects, not just CNCF. But you know, if you've got a great idea and something that really should be there, fantastic. We'd love to hear it. Um, and of course, you can already do what you're doing right now, which is we'll, we'll build on the CII best practices badge, pick a level, and then add specific criteria that you think are important for your project. Um, that's all I've got in terms of a little presentation. Um, love to help, love to answer questions, love to be engaged, uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, and, and Chris has returned. Hi. Hey, no, uh, there, there was a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know if you've... Uh, obs no, I, actually, I didn't turn on the chat. Uh, I have trouble uh, following chat and and, uh, and and talking at the same time, uh, chewing gum and so on. So, no yeah, I, I thought people would be jumping voice if, if they were going to do that. So, okay, let's see. How do I turn on chat on this crazy thing? No worries, I'll, I'll just go. Someone asked uh, how much of, of the CIA badging is objective uh, versus subjective? Oh, of course, now you've got to define subjective and subjective, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, how far down this rat hole can we go? Um, the goal was to be as objective as we could. Um, there are definitely ones that are, are, are subjective. Um, uh, it, it's, and some of those, really, it's not even clear how you would make them subjective. But as, as far as we could, um, I, I would say the majority of them are objective. Some are subjective, but it's okay, simply making the attempt um, is a good thing. I think my favorite subjective one is, you have to describe on, this, on the website briefly what exactly is your project. Um, I have no idea how to automate. I, here's a sentence or two, is that clear? Uh, I have no idea, but you know, at the, uh, for, for that one, what I say is, you make the attempt and, and you're good. Uh, because for most people, it's the, you may, you know, uh, there are actually a number of projects, it's, it's less common, thankfully, now, but there are projects where, you know, they immediately get into the, here's how I was built, and so on, and, but what do you do? <laughs> Tell me that. Um, 
And uh, most of the other ones, you know, things like, for example, the test coverage, 80%. Um, it's a very simple measure. There are lots of tools out there that can measure that. It's, it's not subjective at all. It's quite uh, objective. And we really strive for that through all the criteria. Okay? Cool. Thanks. Um, so, you know, one thing we're trying to figure out is, um, you know, we're refining the graduation requirements for CNCF projects and you know, right. it's kind of a discussion for the TOC to figure out, you know, do, you know, do we keep the same? Do we kind of raise the bar by maybe moving to a higher level um, in the CII right. thing to like, you know, silver or gold, uh, or do we just modify, um, you know, the requirements we have, uh, you know, and put our own kind of uh, twist on it with having kind of the base passing badge. So um, I don't know if there's any strong feelings on, on the TOC that kind of want to, you know, bring this up. Uh, you know, Matt, if you want to speak to this, Brian, oop, Brian there's people chatting. Um, sure. I, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things that I would love to see us actually require. Um, I feel less strongly about whether we, you know, keep passing and add stuff on top like we do today, or we talk about, you know, actually changing those requirements. So I guess I'm wondering, is it, is it worth it to talk briefly about some of the things that we think are missing on the current passing level? And then we can discuss whether we think it's worth working that into silver or gold or, or, or just yeah. adding things on yeah. top. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I have some, <clears throat> love it. I have some opinions about that. Um, and so, so, but I had a question first. Are dependencies of a project treated differently than the source code uh, generated by a project? They are, and, and this is because of the challenging reality that most projects depend on a massive number, uh, particularly when you consider the transitive dependencies, which you really should, right? because uh, so, the transitive so, dependencies matter too. Okay, good. That's what I would expect, but for that yeah. reason, I think it's important for us to, uh, if we can, really try to encourage dependencies to meet the core infrastructure initiative bar as well. Uh, otherwise, the dependencies will be the weakest link of our projects. Um, so I don't. I would prefer to make sure that the TII passing levels um, you thought were satisfactory, as opposed to creating a bunch of our own special requirements. Right. One thing that has been mooted, if I can respond real quick to that, one thing that's mooted um, is basically saying that you're. Um, you know, maybe at gold someday we can require that all of your direct dependencies have themselves a badge. And although that's only the direct, of course, they themselves would start working on it and that would encourage folks all the way down. Um, at this point, we haven't done that because of the simple chicken and egg problem. Um, you know, it's hard to require everybody get a badge when um, you've only got, uh, you know, at the, when we first started, of course, we only had 100 projects were, uh, working or achieving a badge, um, working on a badge. Um, so we, we definitely would like to increase more and uh, more requirements on dependencies um, because obviously that's where a lot of the problems are today. Uh, but it, it, is, it is challenging right now to do that. Uh, but we can certainly at least uh, require, you know, you, you track your dependencies better. And then, um, you know, in the longer term, I'd love to see, hey, let's start doing, dealing with the trains of dependencies to make sure they're doing well too. Uh, the JavaScript infrastructure in particular is where that's really a challenge where people create, you know, little modules that maybe only are a couple of lines long, and so you end up with these huge sets of things you need to deal with. We have a thought about how to deal with that, but that's where we are right now. Oops. Uh, I heard something? Yeah, no worries. Can uh, Matt Farina and then Matt yeah, Klein? Uh, go I just had two quick thoughts on the transitive sure. dependencies, because uh, that's hard. So, so go is not as bad as JavaScript with the so many dependencies, mm -hmm. but it's not small either, yeah. right? Go look at Kubernetes dependency list. Well, I like the idea of getting all the transitive dependencies there. I, I would suggest maybe that be put as a long-term goal out there and saying, how do we help 
you know, carrot projects to get there. And this might be a great place to go pair with GitHub because I know GitHub has these recommendations for projects, you know, include a license file and things like that. If we could take right. the basic badging level and see if they're willing to do some evaluation and guidance on this for projects, this might be an easy way to start carroting more projects that way. Because I would love for some of the dependencies to start going down this path. And if we could partner with them, that might just kind of put more of these carrots out there. Um, just a thought I wanted to pass on while we were in the moment, because I like the idea. I just don't think it's practical in the near future, but I would like it right. to someday. Right. This was our, this was our conclusion as well. We, you know, we would love to mandate more on dependencies, but that gets challenging uh, for all the reasons you just listed. Cool. And I think uh, Matt, Matt Klein had something to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So on the depths, um, it, would be super awesome for, for us to badge all of them, but I also don't think it's actually reasonable. I mean, I think projects will have potentially tens or, or 50 or hundreds of, of depths. Um, I do think that we should potentially invest in tooling to have some type of dashboard to see what dependencies projects have, and then maybe we could have some indication of whether those, those dependencies have been badged. So I think that would be awesome. Um, on the actual uh, things that we should require, the, the, the two things that I would, would like to see, and I actually put this in the TOC issue, um, but there's two main things that I would, I would like to see, and I'm not sure how they will fit in. Um, my, my, uh, my first thing would be some level of code coverage. So whether we take that from silver or gold, um, you know, I, I think some basic level of 80% or 90% would be nice. Um, I totally agree that having uh, code coverage does not mean that the test suite is good, but if you don't have the code coverage, it's guaranteed to be bad. Um, the, right. one, the one that I feel even, even more strongly about though, is that I feel that we need to require a, a hundred percent of changes to be code reviewed. So that's the thing that I'm most concerned about is that the gold level only stipulates 50%. And I, I, I just, I feel so strongly that any graduated project at CNCF must have hundred percent code review. And at least speaking from the Envoy perspective, we go further and say that any non-trivial PR has to have a code review for multiple orgs. And that prevents one organization from actually pushing changes through. Um, so, so those, you know, that's just something that I feel so strongly about, um, that mm -hmm. I would like to figure out how, how to actually get that in. Um, well, I, let's see, let me, let me make a couple responses and I'm sure other folks are going to want to jump in, uh, too. Um, uh, first of all, it, it's, it's a little awkward place because I am actually not against hundred percent code review. I, I love it. I think that's, that's great stuff. Uh, we did get a lot of pushback from various projects who said basically that that was for them not particularly practical. I'd have to go back and drag in some of the things, but that, that was one of the challenges is when you're looking at it uh, broadly across lots of different projects, different projects are in different kinds of situations. Um, obviously, if you want to add a specific code coverage requirement or a code review requirement to CNCF, that's an easy, I mean, you do that, you guys do that right now. You add specific requirements and on you go. Uh, and by the way, there's actually, there is a two-way street here. Um, I mentioned earlier, one of the main causes for something to being in the criteria is that there's evidence that projects are already doing it. Um, the more projects that we can point to that are, uh, that are doing 100% code review, it makes it easier for us to add that as a requirement. So you can actually work the other way. If, uh, if CNCF says, hey, to get graduated, to be graduated, you have to ha achieve 100% code review. Um, fantastic. Uh, you can just do that yourselves, and then we can, we can use that as an argument with other projects to say, hey, it's time to step this, this requirement up. I had a quick question around um, <clears throat> this idea of being able to change the requirements. I can, I can fully appreciate the backwards compatibility concerns and not wanting to change things under projects. But I, I can equally think that, you know, that there's going to be, if you extrapolate this thing out a few years, there are going to be a lot of things that we're going to want to uh, improve upon over time. And we don't want to be restricted in our way, in, in our ability to do that. Have you, have you considered something like a, like a, a year dated uh, compliance that says, you know, we, we got the, 
the 2018 gold badge or whatever. And, you know, every other right. year, maybe the gold badge changes and we're not compliant with the 2020 regulations, but we did get the 2018 ones or something like that. Uh, that, that is actually the expectation. As I mentioned, uh, you know, we, we really don't want to change more than once a year and we want to identify the, um, uh, the, the requirements set when we need to diversion them ba basically by year. Uh, so okay. yeah, we're, we're, our, our, that's, that's exactly what we're thinking. Uh, that said right now, um, uh, there are a lot of projects which are even struggling to meet the, uh, the, the passing criteria. There's a sad statement. Uh, although it's, it's really much struggling, maybe a little misleading. Um, what they find is that they're doing many of them, but yet there are many other things they're not doing. And, and some of them are, are kind of remarkable. You know, why, you know, you're not using HTTPS, shame on you, get with the program. You know, you're not, you, you don't have automated tests, shame on you, get with the program. But because you've got projects that are still in that level, um, there's a, there's a trade-off of if you make, add the requirements and make them too difficult, they decide not to participate at all. And I would rather get half a loaf than no loaf at all. And so that's, which is why it's a lot easier to make changes to the silver or gold, because at that point, you've already committed to working much harder um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to do well. And there are unfortunately a lot of projects which are in, uh, uh, in, in my mind, not even doing the basics. Uh, and not doing the foundational thing. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to now follow the uh, the chat. And yes, uh, Kubernetes is already at passing. Uh, so is Prometheus. Um, and I believe, I'm pretty sure Container D, yeah, Container D is also. They've all achieved passing badges. Yeah, and in fact, the yes, there's the the CNCF landscape actually does include information on the badges already. Uh, the uh, web application actually, you know, makes it really easy to make requests about projects and such. So um, uh, the uh, <clears throat> the landscape already shows information like that. Alrighty, now I got to talk and read at the same time. <laughs> Any, uh, any other questions? I mean, I, I think concrete next steps is to uh, have feedback on the GitHub issue that Matt Klein um, linked. And then I think from there, we could distill uh, potentially a couple of requirements to add to uh, the graduation um, criteria and decide whether it makes sense to, you know, essentially push it upstream to CII um, badging, which seems like it may take a little bit longer. Uh, I, th I think that's actually a good process in general. As I said, if you if you add them, they, they ha I'm sorry to interrupt here, but that makes it um, that makes it a lot easier for us to argue that projects really are doing that. Yeah. No, nope. and, and to answer Mo's question, will graduated projects need to go back and meet the requirements? Uh, no, but that's essentially TOC discretion. Oh, I, I would say that we would hope that you would. Um, I mean, you, each project can make its own decisions, but um, I would think that they, you yeah. know, if, if we add it, um, we, we're only going to add it if it's actually, you know, uh, there's good evidence that's worthwhile. So um, if we're not, uh, frankly, we want to go right away. If we've, if we've made a mistake, uh, that's one thing. And of course, if the project's doing something badly, you would want to know that too. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was going to add a comment along those lines. I think it's very valuable to have projects disclose where they stand with regards to these requirements, uh, even if we don't require them to meet any particular standard, just declaring unequivocally what, what their status is with respect to some of these requirements is super valuable. Yeah, and we'll right. Put, I'm, I'm going to have CNCF kind of do an audit of all of our projects and figure out where they uh, fit, essentially, um, on the gold and, and silver ladder. So. Yeah, if, if they haven't attempted to get silver, they may actually have met more criteria than we know of. Uh, I haven't really talked about, but we do have a, a, a website, uh, a web app that basically lets people uh, fill in information. To the extent that we, um, what we can, we automate filling in the criteria. Some we really do need humans to tell us, and then we record that, and so you can find out where various projects are. Um, if, uh, if they're not meeting that uh, something, then um, uh, 
uh, then the obvious next question is, well, why? And uh, uh, that would be that would be useful for many reasons. Any other uh, questions for uh, David while we have him um, on the line? Uh, if, if not, um, I'll encourage everyone to move the discussion to that GitHub issue um, that was linked by Matt and also in the TOC channel uh, on, on Slack. And um, hopefully by the next TOC meeting, we could distill a couple concrete additions um, to the criteria and have a vote and kind of go from there. Um, yeah, uh, Chris, may, may I interrupt for just a second? Sure, absolutely. Sure. Okay. So absolutely. Um, please, please do contribute there. If there's something specific to the badging that's not really related to CNCF, uh, please uh, file an issue on on GitHub. We like those. So, uh, but, you know, so uh, we we'd love to hear from you in uh, whatever whatever way you can. Awesome. Thanks, David. Um, appreciate uh, uh, you taking the time to uh, present this awesome initiative. Love it. Thank you so very much for your time. So uh, we have about 10 minutes uh, left and, um, you know, pretty much wraps up um, this meeting uh, for this time. Um, I'd kind of leave it open if anyone has anything else they want to discuss, if there's someone on the TOC that would like to uh, bring something up. Um, otherwise, um, we'll get 10 minutes back in our day. I will uh, accept silence as um, we're good to go and we're all going to get about 10 minutes back in our day. So uh, thanks everyone for taking the time to uh, attend and uh, look forward to having the discussion on uh, improving the graduation criteria on, on GitHub. So thank you very much. Thank you. Grace. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. I'd love to.